Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Global Radio Ideas webinar. We're always amazed to have so many people from around the world join us for these things each month. Uh, my name is Ken Benson. I'm from P1 Media Group. So if you need help with research, strategy, music, talent, get in touch. And joining us from Germany today, my co-host, Andy Sanneman, the CEO of Benstown. And Benstown is a worldwide leader in imaging, production, jingles, anything that goes between the records, get a hold of Andy. Hey guys, nice meeting you and thanks to all of you for joining us. This is how vulnerable personalities win. As always, chat box is activated. Let us know where you're watching. If you have a question for us, post it here. We'll be taking questions, or our guests is taking questions uh, later in the show. So let's tell you about today's accomplished guest. He's an expert in radio programming. With experience from Bermuda to Boston, Dallas, Chicago, Philadelphia, San Francisco, just about everywhere. He's programmed several of the biggest urban and R&B AC stations in America, including Chicago's iconic WGCI. His stations have won countless industry awards. I mean, you should have seen what he sent us. I mean, a couple pages of just awards. Uh, also ranked Program Director of the Year many, many times, including being ranked number seven in Radio Inc.'s top programmers in America. In addition, he's discovered and nurtured some of America's most influential talent and shows. And he's even hung out with some of the biggest stars in the world, as you can see here. Any guesses who that guy on the right may be? Andy? Yeah, I'm that's... thinking this is the former president. Yeah, Barack Mr. Obama. So from San Francisco, California, please welcome our guest today, Elroy Smith. Well, uh, Ken and Andy, uh, it's such an honor to uh, be on this incredible platform. Thank you for inviting me. And since the subject matter is about vulnerability, I am going to share some points about my life with regard to me being vulnerable. So it should be a great uh, 40 minutes. Awesome. So we're absolutely looking forward to this. And I think that ties in nicely, hopefully, with uh, my first and most favorite question uh, I'll do all the time. And this would be, um, I mean, obviously you're like an accomplished radio program and talent coach, but let, let's begin by telling us something that people don't know about you, Mr. Elroy Smith. Well, Andy, um, I don't know if uh, people know that I was born and raised in Bermuda and I was in a singing group. Um, unfortunately, that did not work out. So after a major performance, which I thought was great, uh, I was pulled aside by the members of the group and I was fired. So I knew I wanted to do something pertaining to entertainment. So I went to the local radio station asking, can I be a disc jockey? They gave me copy to read and I fumbled over the copy. So one person suggested you may want to go to school. The problem, Andy and Ken, I did not graduate from high school. So how in the world would I be able to get into college? But I tried, and there was a school in Boston called Graham Junior College that stated to me, if you get a letter from a politician and a lawyer, um, and if it's a representative well of yourself, uh, we will allow you into this college because we will be closing wow. down in a year and a half. So I got those two letters, and I was admitted into this two-year program at Graham Junior College. So here we are in Boston, uh, feeling really delinquent because I didn't finish high school, graduated from Graham Junior College, transferred to Emerson College. While at Emerson, I was doing an internship at uh, this local station called WILD. Now, for those of you that have never heard of this radio station, it is an AM station that was only on during the day. So whenever it turned dark, it was off the air. So I did an internship there uh, in 1981. I graduated. A gentleman named Steve Crumley was the program director, offered me a full-time job the year I graduated. He left in 1983, and I became the program director. So things began to happen uh, in Boston. I did not even know what programming was all about, but I tried it. I thought the only thing I wanted to do was to be a radio personality. So I'm adding songs. My goodness, I played this new song. And then I remember in 1983, a gentleman named Maury Starr, a famous producer from Boston, he and Ricky Bell from New Edition 
walked into the studio. Now, how did that happen? The studio was in the Black community. And in Boston, there are only four Black folk. So I'm just teasing, but it's about 8% <laughs> African, <laughs> African Americans in Boston. And this Black station was in Roxbury. So the door is always open. The, the community can just walk on in. So Maury Starr and Ricky Bell from New Edition walked in and gave me the song. And the song was Candy Girl. So as a new program director, I'm like, boy, these guys live in Roxbury right around the corner. Let me go ahead and play this record. So I played it. And then phone calls were the thing then. I, I played it once. Phone lines, uh, Andy and Ken went bananas. Played it twice. The phone lines continued to lit up. Played it three times in a row. And at that point, I realized that, boy, maybe New Edition has a career. <laughs> maybe they had a career. But what really solidified uh, the success of Candy Girl was when I turned on a station in Boston called Kiss 108. And when I heard it on this Top 40 radio station, I knew that there was something special about New Edition and um, the rest is history. Yeah, so wow. what you're telling us, Elroy, is without you, there'd be no Bobby Brown, no Belle Viv DeVoe, and now a guy from New Edition that's seeking your advice to become a radio presenter, Ralph Tresvant from New Edition. Yeah, well, Ralph reached out to me and wanted to find out how to get into the radio business. And of course, I remembered him from, what, 30 years ago. We had a phenomenal relationship for 30 years, and I took the time out to uh, speak with him with regard to giving him advice. And the advice was for him to be vulnerable, similar to what we are discussing today. So he went on the station in Atlanta called Magic and did very, very well for uh, four days. So it was truly an honor to sit down with Ralph, give him some tips so that uh, he could have a successful audition at Magic in Atlanta. All right. And we were going to try and insert a quick video clip here. So maybe our producer's having some trouble. I'm not sure. So we'll, we'll give her three seconds. No worries. Hi, I'm Elroy Smith. And I'm here with uh, just the wonderful and incredible guy that's been in the music business for over 30 years. I'm not going to talk about his singing career. I'm going to talk about something that many of you may not know. Ralph Trasvan, when he retires from singing, he wants to be a radio personality. So he <laughs> called me a few weeks ago saying he's going on Magic, big station in Atlanta, to do an audition, to be on the air for like four nights. And he said, yeah. any tips? So I gave him a few tips. But one of the tips that I really, really dwelled on is for Ralph to be vulnerable. So yeah. Ralph, what happened? Well, yeah, like, yeah, like you said, man, I reached out to you because yeah, I grew up listening to you on the radio in Boston. I was mimicking you as a little boy before there was ever a new addition career or any career in the music industry. So, you know, throughout the years, we've always kept our friendship. I've just seen you go on to do even greater things than you were doing in Boston at radio. So I said, well, who's a better, who the better, who best can I go? Who can I go to? to get some tips on, you know, being a better uh, disc jockey or better on air personality. And the only person I could think of was Elroy Roy Smith. I said, okay, I got to call Elroy. Roy. So when you gave me, you gave me a bunch of gems that day, but when you told me about being vulnerable, it just hit home because it reminded me of some of the people who I saw give that put themselves in that position mm -hmm. that I was attached to, you know, other artists or different on air personalities or even, um, TV host that were in these vulnerable moments that made me turn towards them that I never realized that's what I was connecting to, mm -hmm. you know, that that's what made me love them or like them even more than, you know, I mean, I heard about them. I saw them doing their thing, but I never. Uh, my it. question is, were you vulnerable? I gave you that. Yeah, point of I mean, that's what I mean. When I <laughs> wow. Elroy. Um, I was in Lisbon last week for the Radio Days Europe conference, and mm -hmm. the overarching, I think, theme and takeaway was is that personalities are more essential today than ever for our survival. Do you agree with that statement? Yeah. I, uh, look, Ken, that's why podcasting 
is so popular why people want to hear other people's opinion. I find myself walking around the house listening to uh, a podcast. My son, who is 22 years old, um, you know, I sent him a text saying, uh, his name is Colin. Colin, have you heard of KMEL, which is a huge station here in the Bay Area? And he responded, no. I'm thinking we have been living in the Bay Area for five years and you have never heard of KMEL. No, dad, I listened to Spotify. Then one day he picked me up and I heard somebody talking. I said, who's talking? He said, it's Joe Rogan. He went from Spotify, hip hop music to Joe Rogan. So that tells you even for youngsters, uh, podcasting um, is phenomenal. So personalities are phenomenal. And I want to just cover some of the things that I teach uh, in my the coach, coaching you into a brand uh, business. Uh, you must become a great storyteller. And here's an example of someone that is a great storyteller, uh, Steve Harvey. If you listen to this guy, um, Ken, you will hear real life situations. You will hear Steve talking about his struggles I didn't know that he lived in his car for three years. And when he explains something, Ken and Andy, he paints a picture. Audio is about what? Theater of the mind. And he does a great job. And then finally, he's unapologetic in terms of his faith. So become a great storyteller. Don't just read and think, okay, I've relayed some content. Get into the story. And he does a great job. Another uh, important point is having a strong personality. Charlemagne is a good example of having a strong personality. Being different is more important than being better. You always hear personalities, I want to be better. No, 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 no. Be different. Charlemagne is different. He's unpredictable. He's brutally honest. He was on the Stephen Colbert show the other night, and he was talking about his therapist. How many people would just casually talk about the therapist. Usually personalities, celebrities, they don't like to talk about stuff like that. And then great shows are known for one thing. That show, The Breakfast Club, is known for what? The donkey of the day. People want to hear whether Charlemagne disagrees or agrees with someone that has done something. They tune in to check him out. Now, there's a station in Atlanta uh, that does syndication as well. The morning show is called The Morning Takeover with a guy named Young Jock. They have this feature called The Second Update. Um, The couple goes out on a date first time around. They do it the second time. The owner, Steve Hegwood, called and said, we have something outside of the music. The music is the music. But Steve was saying, we have this feature. Today, that feature runs on this show three times a morning. Why? That show is now known for one thing. Not saying that's the only thing they do, but you got to be known for something. Also, uh, become a great interviewer. Can we agree here and now that we will not use the word interview ever again? The word should be become (laughs) a great person in terms of having a conversation. So my example of someone that has a great conversation with uh, celebrities is Howard Stern. He is riveting when he talks to his guest. He's thought provoking. He's intriguing. And he doesn't ask uh, your conventional questions. He knows how to draw out uh, anything that's on the celebrity's mind. And he gets the celebrities to be vulnerable. For instance, most people want to know this anyway, with regard to a celebrity, how much are you worth? There's nothing wrong with that question. Have you experienced a disappointment? There's nothing wrong with that. And then what is your biggest regret? You get into those sort of personal questions. The listener will lean over to the radio to listen closely. Now, my advice is to avoid the mundane questions such as you want a Grammy. How do you feel? If I ever hear an interviewer say that again to a celebrity, I am going to go crazy. Well, how do you think the person feels? They're happy. Or another question. (laughs) (laughs) What record company are you with? Who cares? The average person doesn't care about the record company. And then here's another one. How is the tour going? Do you think they're going to say, well, the tour is going really bad. Only four tickets have been sold. 
And then the other one, what should we expect from the concert? Oh, it's going to be a horrible show. You may not want to come. Those are mundane questions. Yeah. And then finally, in terms of what I teach, become a brand. And what's the definition of a brand? A brand has an emotional connection with the consumer. I don't get it because I don't like coffee. But Starbucks, that thing, I hate to say that thing, that coffee shop is a brand. Can we build our personality into becoming a brand? Every day, people are going bananas, going crazy if they don't have a taste of Starbucks. That's the way they should feel about your radio show. Maybe they put something in there. So, <laughs> I mean, obviously, obviously, I mean, we touched on the, on, the, on the superstars you work with. And just as a sidebar, I mean, you discovered Steve Harvey in a comedy club and put him on the radio, which I think is a fantastic achievement by itself. So, Elroy, what is the five tips you could share on being vulnerable? Like, what is the five really the five most important things for people who are basically waking up today and decide I'm going to be vulnerable on the air and I'm going to do it right. You know, like what's, what, what should they do? Well, um, here are my top five in terms of being vulnerable. Bring your audience into your world. Wendy Williams is a good example of being able to do that. She has become a household name. She's vulnerable. That's why. I'll throw in an artist. Her name is Mary J. Blige. You should go to a Mary J. Blige concert, Ken and Andy. You should see the women that are just so emotionally in awe of this lady. Why? They can relate. Same with Wendy Williams. All of the pain that she goes through, women or somebody that they know is going through the same thing Wendy is going through. And Wendy finally comes across as someone's best friend. So that's number one. Uh, bring your audience into your world. The next thing is expose your heart. It endears people. Let's look at Robin Roberts from Good Morning America. After she sh shared her journey through cancer, the brand of Robin Roberts skyrocketed. Not saying people did not know her, but they made a personal connection. Who would go on television with no hair? Especially women, I'm like, more women, we all want to look good. I got a little nice shirt on today because I knew I was going to do this. We all want to look presentable. And Robin said, you know what? It doesn't matter. I want to share my journey. Number three, take chances. I'm, I think of Kathy Hughes. And Kathy Hughes, for those of you who are not familiar with this lady, she is the founder of Radio One, the nation's largest urban broadcasting company. When she went to purchase her first radio station, she was rejected 32 times by bankers. The average person would have given up after the third rejection. Why? She took a chance and said, you know what? I am not going to stop. And her first radio station in Washington, D.C. was WOL. And look at her huge, huge operation today. And then uh, have an opinion. The talk, think of the television show, The Talk or The View. They all talk about the following subjects. R. Kelly's verdict. As a personality, if you just went on the air the other day and said, well, R. Kelly was found guilty. Now here is Justin Timberlake on power. That means nothing. But the personality that stopped the music, well, some program directors won't allow that. Or well, the personality that had, a, had, a, had an opinion, that's, that's the connection. The next thing is Adele hasn't been around, gentlemen, for about five years. So instead of just playing her song, why is this song burning out the airwaves? Have an opinion. The controversy of COVID-19. Are you vaccinated? If you're not, say it. Or if you are, say it. That's having an opinion. Will and Jada Smith's uh, marriage. It's an open marriage versus just reading. OK, I don't know if you've heard about it. Will and Jada Smith have an open marriage. And now here's Bruno Mars on power. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, uh, you need to make a connection. There's a lady that's on um, what syndication uh, or in syndication. She's been doing it for a while. Her name is Delilah. Um, she is an open book with her audience. That's what I love about her. 
her listeners are an open book with her. Why? There's a connection. The trust is very, very deep between Delilah and her listeners. Uh, the, when she talks about her pain, when she talks about her joy, the listeners feel that. So I advise people to make a connection if you want to be a successful on-air personality. Otherwise, just reading a liner. Okay, coming up uh, this hour, we have uh, Bruno Mars' brand new song. And right after Bruno Mars, uh, we will play a classic uh, right here on Hot. Who is going to go home and say, you know what? Man, Bruno Mars is coming on. And right after that, another song. No one speaks like that. People talk about personalities because of what they have to say. So I encourage everybody to make a connection. Great advice. Thanks for that. We're chatting with veteran urban R&B programmer Elroy Smith. Elroy will be taking your questions in a couple of minutes. I mean, obviously, if you have questions, type it in the chat box as usual. Elroy, I mean, talk. I'll see you like most of the talk. Of you, like you have such a great t passion for talent. Um, and obviously, like I have a great passion for imaging because that's, that's what I'm doing since more than 20 years now. And I felt imaging always as a great help to turn talent into brands. So how, how is your opinion as a program director, as a consultant, how can imaging be used to help turn talent into brands? Is that something you have done? Is that something you, you, you encourage people to do? And, and what's your secret recipe to do so? Well, Andy, first of all, I love imaging as well, but I am not into the imaging where the voice person is shouting. <laughs> V100, that is just a little too much for me because when you meet that person in person, um, Andy, their voice is totally different. Um, let's take a Z100 in New York, Z100, and it blends right into a soft song. I've heard stations playing high energy imaging into a hello by Adele. You are way up there with your imaging and then here comes Absolutely. hello. Uh, so, so that is a concern. Now, we did have an issue at KBLX in San Francisco. We had a morning team called the Dream Team, and they were just coming on saying, we are the Dream Team. I was thinking something is missing. So I reached out uh, to uh, a producer in Chicago named Naki. I said, Naki, I need a bumper. I need something. So he came up with a contemporary beat and had a song. Dream Team in the morning. Wake up, wake up. Now, it may have not sounded good to you and uh, Ken, but that song, that jingle at KBLX in San Francisco <laughs> was rated by the listeners as something that they loved. Why? Even going out, people are responding to the jingle. So to answer your question, if imaging is effective, it's got to be done, laid out in, in a special way. Well, Elroy, we're going to get to some questions after one last question from us. And it's my perspective. I've never worked in urban radio, but my perspective is urban radio does an exceptional job serving their listeners, serving their communities, building community. Um, is my assumption right? And, and why is that? And, and what can we learn from urban radio? You know, um, Ken, w what makes it so special, if you live the life of um, this format, you can understand it more. Or if you study it, some people don't study it. Some people would say community is not important. Community is so important. That's why there are stations that are considered legendary. Why? Because all of the years that they have been in existence, they we're concerned about the community. So let's talk about some community things here. I want everyone that's watching this webinar right now to look closely at this image that's on your screen. Think about it. There is something that is missing from uh, this image. One would say, well, Elroy, the call letters of the radio station is missing. Well, I intentionally took out the call letters because I didn't want to expose the radio station. So now that you've looked at it, here's my point. I saw this on Facebook and I was disappointed. I said to myself, if this person is expecting listeners to come out, 
nobody is going to come out. Why? It doesn't look attractive. The only people that I see are people way down there, uh, unattached to the event, and then the street team. I would encourage everybody in social media not to post things like this. It messes up uh, your brand. And then an hour later, another post came. Probably was three more people. Why are you posting something that could hurt your brand? Now, you see the word here, community. A lot of times we believe that community is, well, let's take the radio station in the community. So all of a sudden, we are now the community station. No, community can be something that you do on the air. Let me give you an example. I remember coming out of church um, and my son, 14 years old, his name is Carson. Carson said he had his phone. Oh, um, Kobe Bryant, uh, something happened. I said, well, what happened? He said, I'm getting, I think he died in and, 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 and a plane crash. I said, Carson, really? And I had my phone off because I didn't want to have the phone on in church. So I turned it back on, Ken, and all of a sudden, the, the messages blew up. Kobe, plane crash, you know, family member harmed. And it was so impactful. Here's the problem. We were in, uh, what, automation. There was nobody at the station live. Wow. So I had to scramble around to find anybody to get to the station to break format. Ooh, oh my goodness, you're breaking format? Yes, and I'll tell you why. Kobe Bryant on that day could replace any hit record. So I said to the two personalities that went in, break format, put phone calls on the air. Why? The community wanted to talk about Kobe Bryant. People, emotional people just tearing up. So that is still a part of community. And then finally, um, when Hurricane uh, Harvey hit, I said to my team at uh, KBLX in San Francisco, we need to do something to reach out to all of these families in pain. And you see the lady there, her name is uh, Kimmy Taylor. Uh, she said, Elroy, maybe we should do a promotion from the Bay to the Babies. I fell in love with that campaign. What does that mean? Let's collect diapers and um, uh, what? Yeah, yeah, diapers for and wipes for babies in Houston. We collected over 600,000 and sent them off to the victims of um, uh, Hurricane Harvey. And that's what it's all about, getting input from your team because program directors, they don't have all of the answers. And I want to stop here and say that L. Ray Smith is not the smartest program director around, not even one, one of the smartest program directors around. What I do do, which I think it has worked for my career, I hire people that are better than me. Suppose I just hired everybody that knew what I knew. Pfft, that won't be a successful radio station. So I look out for people that are smarter than me. Yeah, great advice. So we're Absolutely. chatting with Elroy Smith, the legendary urban radio programmer and radio talent coach. If you've got a question for Elroy, here's your chance. He's going to answer them for free today only. <laughs> so let's get on with some questions uh, as we have a couple of minutes for these. So first up, uh, Mr. Smith. Who were your mentors? Well, you know, every time uh, that question comes up, um, I would rather not get into a list. And I'll tell you why. I'm going to leave uh, someone out. And I don't want to do that, uh, Ken and Andy. I have so many people that took the time to mentor me. So many people that said, Elroy, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? So many people that have supported me. So I just want to say to everybody, uh, that has helped me in terms of my career. Uh, thank you very much. But I'll name certain radio stations that influenced me. Uh, WABC uh, in New York. Uh, I was just blown away listening to, you know, Cousin Brucey and, and, and Chuck Leonard. Uh, and then WWRL in New York. Uh, WOL in, in Washington, D.C. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, when Donnie Simpson went to Washington, WKYS, uh, WBLS, WRKS, uh, those are just a few. And then finally, one big station that I learned from afar. If none of you have heard of this program director, please Google this guy. 
His name is Sonny Joe White. Uh, Sonny Joe White put a station on in uh, Boston called Kiss 108. I never worked uh, for Sonny Joe White, but what I did do after my little radio station signed off when it got dark, <laughs> if you remember, I told you at the beginning, I worked for a station, Sunrise to Sunset. So I would listen to Kiss 108 and I would take notes. That radio station was a superstar radio station. Why? Every single day part, the personality was compelling. A lot of times you hear stations saying, okay, after 10 o'clock, you must shut up. Well, no, there's a station in Cleveland uh, called WZAK. They have Ricky Smiley in the morning, a lot of entertainment. They have a gentleman named Sam Silk in midday, a lot of entertainment. Then they have D.L. Hughley, a lot of entertainment. If the entertainment, if the content is correct, the listener will not say it's too much talk. Don Collins asks, what do you think of syndication? That's a loaded one. Many radio companies are cutting costs, staff, and picking up a syndicated show, which I think it's not happening now. I mean, it's been done like for the last 15, 20 years. So how is your feeling about syndication, Elroy? Well, um, first of all, many years ago, I was totally uh, opposed to it. And Tom Joyner would attest to that because um, he came to me one day as one of my personalities at WGCI in Chicago and said, I'm leaving. I said, when? He said, right now. Um, no two week notice or anything. I'm, I said, okay. Uh, thank you, Elroy. Um, and he went off and did his syndicated show. And I was concerned why it had a disconnect with regard to um, Chicago. But as time went on, uh, Tom was just uh, making the tweaks. So to answer your question, it really depends on who the talent is. There are certain syndicated shows that are very, very good. I think a lot of listeners listen for the entertainment. They are not sitting back saying, okay, uh, they are not down the street, so I won't listen. It really depends on how the show is structured and a, a good show, for an example, Elvis Duran. He has a phenomenal show uh, that originates out of uh, New York. And I've been talking about this show, and I'll talk about it again. Uh, Charlemagne the God that and The Breakfast Club. They do a great job at connecting. But one last thing on, on Charlemagne. A lot of people think that that show became famous uh, terrestrial. That is incorrect. That show became popular because of their YouTube channel. I was in Norfolk the other day and I said to um, a lady at, at the hotel front desk, I said, oh, uh, I'm new in town, just wondering uh, what radio station she, you, you listen to in Norfolk. She said, oh, no one has ever asked me that question. She, she freaked out. And she, she stopped and said, oh, um, I listen to um, The Breakfast Club, but I listen to it via video. I'm like, oh, so she did not even turn the station on. That is her mind of listening to The Breakfast Club. It's because of their YouTube channel. Well, the station is a, a show is a brand. It's not about the station. It's about the show then, clearly, right? Yes, um, yes. What, what I would be personally interested in, and maybe uh, that goes a little bit off track, but I think that's kind of like a Howard Stern type of question without uh, thinking that I could be somewhere near. It'd be really interesting for me, how do you get these letters from the attorney and from the politician that got you into college? That would be like, that would be really interesting to me, like as a young student like how did you get those letters and the, like how do you basically like find find these people who would basically give you give you those letters to to enter college well um andy first of all thank you uh with my burning desire to get into radio um and not having a high school diploma uh, i pleaded to um the politician i'm sorry and it's a minister that helped and uh, they put this letter together. And remember, the school was in desperation because they were closing. So they wanted, you know, some money to continue on. And they said, these letters are inspiring. You have been accepted into uh, college. Uh, so it, it was a godsend because I just didn't know what the answer was. And I had no interest in school. But I tell people all the time, don't follow Elroy on this one. That was not a good move at all. Well, Elroy, um, what a career you've had. It's so evident in everything you shared today. Um, the advice, uh, I mean, just the talent that you've discovered, worked with, nurtured, developed these massive urban radio stations around America that you've led to big success. It's been an absolute uh, pleasure to have you as a guest today. So thanks for joining us. 
And uh, Ken and Andy, thank you so much for uh, having me. I appreciate it only by the grace of God that I'm able to sit here today and share my story with um, all of you. So thank you. You're welcome. If you you want to get in touch with Elroy, you can email him at elroy.thecoach at gmail.com. He also has a website, elroythecoach.com. So feel free to check it out and send him a note if you wish. Uh, And on behalf of everybody watching today, thank you so much. We're going to have a video posted tomorrow at Benstown. P1 Media Group websites, um, also our social channels, and it will also be available via Elroy's website. I'm sure he's going to figure out a way to get this great content out there. <laughs> and if you like what you saw today, feel free to watch it again and share it, because I really, I think today there's so much incredible information that would help anybody working on air in radio. And, and in fact, uh, just got a note here. Thank you, Elroy. Have a great day. Thanks for this. Thanks. I mean, I learned a ton from you working across the street with you. <laughs> That's so, what Tim um, Slat says. <laughs> yeah, lots, lots of great feedback on our session. So thanks for watching. Uh, we're working Absolutely. on something Thank really big for our November webinar. We just don't have it tightened up yet. So we're not going to announce what that is just yet. So keep an eye in your social Ooh, channels. Spoiler, like, like, you, want me to, you want me to do a spoiler, Ken? No, no spoiler day. No, no it's going to be, it's gonna be really awesome. Um, it's going to be really awesome. And uh, we're really excited. And um, you should be too. So. Also want to thank our producer, Suzanne, for uh, helping put this together each month. And, and last thing I want to say, if you have a suggestion for a topic or a webinar guest, uh, drop us a note. My email is ken at p1mediagroup.com, or you can reach Andy at as at benstown.com. Okay. Yeah, thanks again for watching from P1 Media Group in Benstown. We'll see you again next month. And Elroy, all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Elroy. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys, Take for care. watching. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. bye-bye.